Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. My primary monitor failed today, which means that I'm recording uh, this on my backup monitor, which means right now I pretty much look like this. So this is going to be fun. Still, got to look on the bright side. I mean, the old monitor was older than my PC. Actually, it was older than my previous PC. <laughs> its uh, maximum resolution was 1080p, so yeah, it was. I got my money's worth out of it, and it's beyond time I upgraded, so... Yeah, anyway, back to the video. Pearl River is back. It's been a while. I got really excited that they were bringing Pearl River back for World of Tanks 10th anniversary until I realised that I was actually thinking of Dragon's Ridge. Another map that's been out of the game for years and which unfortunately shows no signs of coming back anytime soon. And a map on which I scored my second ever Radley Walders medal in the Lorraine 40T when it was a French tier 8 medium tank and not a premium. But enough about Dragon's Ridge, this is Pearl River. And here on Pearl River, in the all new, all singing, all dancing Polish tier 8 medium, the CS53, is, I think that's pronounced, Hellhammer. And Hellhammer, if that is how you pronounce his name, is going to answer for us the age-old question of just exactly how many tanks does it take to stop a classic lemming train. First I suppose we have to actually define what a lemming train is, because you'll often see people mistakenly referring to lemming trains when they look at the minimap and realise that three quarters of their team has all gone around the western flank. Now this can often be a lemming train, but you don't know for sure whether or not the three quarters of the team all going in one direction actually is a lemming train in the classic sense, until they run into an enemy tank. And it's what happens at that point that lets you know whether or not you're looking at an actual lemming train or the much more rare bunch of players aggressively pushing a flank. How can you tell the difference, Jingles? Excellent question. I'm so very glad you asked. A bunch of players aggressively pushing the same flank will not stop when they spot an enemy tank. They will keep pushing aggressively. A lemming train, on the other hand, are going to do exactly what all of these enemy tanks are doing whenever they run into the slightest hint, the merest suggestion of any form of resistance. Shit their pearly pink panties, immediately forget where their W key is, and then all kind of start shuffling around on the corner, looking at each other, waiting to see who's going to grow a pair of balls and go first. In this case, it's the poodle, but of course he dicked around on the corner so long, finding his testicles that by the time he decided to make a break for it, he was a one-shot kill. The Carnarvon finds his balls next, and uh, Hellhammer puts a shot into his tracks, forced him to use his repair kit, but despite removing the poodle, it looks like uh, Hellhammer here is still fighting enemies that outnumber him five to one, uh, because the enemy artillery has just joined in. So, of course, he starts pulling back to make himself artillery safe. He is still the only tank on his team in the middle of the map. Hellhammer has so far managed to block more than two and a half thousand damage with the armour of this tier 8 Polish medium tank, which is pretty damn impressive when you consider that it only has 80 millimetres of hull armour at the front, and I'm assuming he's running the upgraded turret, 130 millimetres of turret armour at the front. It's almost as if it might actually be a better idea, instead of fruitlessly bouncing shots off the front of his turret, it might be a good idea for these guys to get around the side of his tank, where his armour is at best only 60 millimetres thick. But, well, it wouldn't be a lemming train if they were doing that, now would it? The heavily armoured Black Prince has now spent so long hiding behind the very badly armoured Carnarvon that a couple of uh, Hellhammer's teammates have managed to win the opposite flank and get around behind him. And I can't say for sure, but I have a sneaking suspicion that the only reason those guys were able to win the eastern flank was because an entire third or more of the enemy team was tied down here in the middle by Hellhammer's lone CS-53. Which of course meant that the rest of the enemy team, everywhere else on the map other than right here in the middle, are going to have been outnumbered by whatever elements of Hellhammer's team they were going to be facing. Despite Hellhammer's single-handedly fighting an entire third of the enemy team to a standstill here in the middle of the map, the outcome of this battle is, well, far from certain, as an enemy T-3485 managed to work his way around to the rear. So, since nobody else seems to care, Hellhammer takes it upon himself to go and deal with the threat. The T-3485 starts backing off, and unlike the rest of his team, he's not dumb enough to pump shots into Hellhammer's turrets, so he actually manages to score some damage. 
Hellhammer closing in to face-hugging range where the T-3485 will be at the mercy of its poor gun depression and the T-3485 so desperate to avoid that situation that he almost flips himself and it's here. We're a friendly T-3485. Yep, that, that really just happened. <laughs> Yeah, I think we need to see that again. This time, slowed down, and with some suitably dramatic music. Remember kids, if it's funny once, it's funny every time. What is it about lemming trains, anyway? They seem to be particularly endemic to wargaming titles like World of Tanks and World of Warships. Yes, you get them in World of Warships as well. And yet, the term didn't originate with World of Tanks or World of Warships. It originated in first-person shooters. Although you hardly ever see it used in first-person shooters anymore. And if, in fact, you were to Google the term Lemming Train, the overwhelming majority of results would be from World of Tanks or World of Warships. I think it might be down to the fact that if in a first-person shooter you see a bunch of lemmings following somebody because they think he appears to know what he's doing, and they all get mown down in a burst of machine gun fire, it's over far too quickly. And it's only when you see the same bunch of players doing the same thing over and over and over, and getting mown down over and over and over, um, that you realise you're actually watching a lemming train. But in World of Tanks, because you have hit point bars, and you rarely die to the first shot, and you have armour, that you actually get the chance to stop and admire the sheer bloody-minded tenacity, <laughs> if nothing else, <laughs> of the lemming train in action. But whatever the reasons, I think the one thing that we can state with absolute certainty is that lemming trains are a cherished fixture of wargaming titles. They're not going anywhere fast, much like the lemming trains themselves. And for as long as there's at least one person on your team who gives off the slightest impression that they at least appear to look as if they know what they're doing, they're always going to be followed by a crowd of bumbling incompetents who panic and dive into cover at the first sign of anything threatening. The thing about lemming trains, though, is that while they're frustrating to witness, they're a fairly common, somewhat understandable, and unremarkable variety of stupid. What we have next are multiple displays of stupid that are impressive by anybody's standards. We join, I'm going to call him Dave, after he's played a pretty spirited game here, but is now in a, an extremely tricky position against a, an almost full health enemy Valiant. Now, as you've probably guessed already, this isn't really about Dave. It's about what happens after he dies. And it's mostly, but not just, about this ARL V39. Now, I will say one thing and one thing only in the ARL's defence. It sucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Despite the fact that it can upgrade to the 90mm DCA-45 gun, which has good accuracy, good aiming time, and outstanding penetration for a Tier 6 tank destroyer, it still sucks. And this ARL doesn't have that gun. Well, not this ARL, that's an extremely dead VK-3001H, and that tank also sucks, by the way. No, I mean, this ARL. Actually, you know, the VK-3001H never used to suck. Well, it kind of did, in just about every way other than its speed, which was blisteringly fast, and then one day, for reasons known only to themselves, Wargaming decided that it needed to be slow as well. Yeah. Anyway, back to the ARL. Even the official World of Tanks wiki page recognises how bad this machine is. In the opening statement on the performance of this machine it says, and I quote, the ARL V39 generally works best at medium to long ranges, either providing second line support to the team or sniping at long ranges. Look at where this guy is. That's not second line support. That's not even fourth or fifth line support. If he was any further to the rear, he'd be on Erlenberg. Up until this point, the team were convinced that they were watching a bot, and then of course he starts moving, although I could have told you long before this point that he wasn't a bot, because a bot would have been better than this. This guy, with only seven tanks remaining across both teams, has yet to fire his first shot of the game. And I don't think it's really going to be too much of a spoiler if I was to tell you that the number of shots that he is going to fire in this match can be counted on the fingers of one hand, and they're all going to miss. 
But despite that spoiler, there are still some surprises in store because some of these misses really have to be seen to be believed. Now he's not going to miss any shots at the M10, because while he's angling up around the rock, he fails to notice that the M10 has actually been taken out by friendly artillery, and he's still attempting to angle in order to get the perfect shot against the enemy tank destroyer that was killed about 15 seconds ago. Of course all of this manoeuvring is a complete waste of time in the ARL V39, thanks to that stupid bloody machine gun turret on top that exists for the sole purpose of getting this machine shot at when it can't even see what's shooting at it. Meanwhile our hero finally appears to have realised that the M10 that he's been trying to get a shot off at has been dead for the better part of a minute now. Or perhaps he's trying to work his way around. <laughs> if that is the case it's clear that he is capable of thinking even if he hasn't realised that his opponent is dead. I'm not entirely sure if that's better or worse. Although what comes next is definitely worse. I am sure of that. Because remember there's a Valiant around here. And he's just found him. And the Griller. Now friendly artillery doesn't waste any time but he's managed to actually miss the Valiant from a range of less than 20 meters. Friendly artillery takes care of the Valiant for him and I believe he just put a shot into the dead Valiant uh, for no good reason that I can tell. <laughs> he's got the gun pointed at the enemy Griller and misses. <laughs> yes, really. And then gets taken out by the enemy VK. Four shots he fired during the entire course of this battle and not one of them did any damage. Now you might be thinking, well at least the two artillery on his team are competent. You might be thinking that and you're at least 50% wrong. <laughs> despite the fact that they both have two kills between them. Because while that was pretty impressive, um, what you're going to see next just defies description. Here's the Griller. On full health, obviously, he's artillery, with the uh, le fur 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 on the other side of the farmhouse in the distance overlooking the cap circle. Also, obviously, on full health because he's artillery. Now, the team are suggesting that it might be a good idea for one of them and they're suggesting that it should be the Griller, because while it's not a particularly fast machine, it's faster than le fur 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 should go and attempt to cap, to draw out the enemy VK, who, by the way, should be a one-shot kill. They estimate he has something like 240 health remaining. But take a closer look at the direction in which this guy is pointing. Can you see it yet? Let's just zoom in on the minimap for a closer look. He's aiming into the corner of the map. He's actually managed to get his gun pointing in the one direction from which no enemy tank is ever going to appear. So of course it comes as no great surprise to anybody except the Griller when the VK appears from right behind him. And did you hear the sound of that shot in the distance? That was the sound of the Griller missing the VK who has stopped to aim right in front of him. It's only after the Griller missed that the VK thought it might be a good idea to move and then stops to aim right in front of him again. And the Griller does get the shot off, but it wasn't enough to kill him. And it's the Lefer Fer 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 who saves this match from descending even further into comedy. And just when you thought things couldn't get even more ridiculous, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that that Griller was the third highest scoring player on the team. And the ARL V39, who sat at the back of the map and did nothing until there were only seven tanks remaining across both teams, and then fired four shots, none of which did any damage, actually scored better than six of his teammates. And on that bombshell, as you're trying to salvage what little remains of your brain cells and trying to make sense of the sheer ridiculousness of this whole situation, I'd like to wish you all a good day and I hope you enjoyed today's video. <laughs> That's it folks. Take care, stay safe and I'll catch you next time.